All right, so here's how it went. We were just cruising right along, smooth sailing through life with no issues as usual, and then the wife says, The truck is dead. It seemed a little bit strange because we drive that vehicle every day, and it's rare that thing just dies overnight. So I was concerned that there was a parasitic draw, but did my due diligence, charged the battery, even replaced the battery. It was under warranty, took it in, and it had zero cranking amps on the load test and completely dead. Exchange it under the warranty and then put it in, same thing, next day battery was dead. I was able to recharge it this time, but now I know I have a parasitic drain, so I'm gonna go through the process of what I did to show you guys how I found it and a few things that are different than other parasitic drain videos. So if I would have just followed the steps in those videos, I would have been chasing my tail for days and never found my issue. And no, you don't have to pull the entire engine harness out of the car. This is for a swap project. If you like engine swaps, be sure to subscribe. If I had to add anything to start us off in the beginning, it would be to be very patient. You need to be patient and wait. And a lot of times if you're like pulling fuses out, you put a fuse back in, it may cycle power to something. And then you're starting the process of the body control module going back to sleep again. So you may have to to wait for a couple minutes as you, you'll see in the video that I'll start at one amp rating and then it slowly starts to drop as things are turning off so you have like your dome lights and other things going on so just be patient and give it time everything needs to go to sleep keep all the doors shut as much as you can uh, I was checking I will end up checking inside the fuse panel inside the vehicle so what I did in that situation was I would pull a fuse come out shut the door and then start the process over. It takes a little bit longer, but I wanted to just see if everything is in a normal situation, like just me opening and closing the door and what is gonna happen. So that's what I'm doing. Hopefully it helps you. So I wanna make sure you have a digital multimeter that reads amps. This reads milliamps and up to 10 amps. So if I wanna read 10 amps, it has to go on this side. So the lead needs to come over to here. This will read milliamps with it on this side, but we're gonna be drawing current uh, in excess of 6 amps for sure so I'm going to switch this thing over to the 10 amp side so I know I don't fry the meter. These things are fused but these do go bad so make sure if you go from reading amps to measuring say battery voltage again switch this thing around otherwise you're going to short this thing out and fry it. Alright so to hook up the multimeter we're going to unhook the negative on the battery and I always hook, unhook the negative you some say you're supposed to do it on the positive, but I like to do it on the negative because if you have anything connected to the positive on the battery, then you touch it to anything grounded in the vehicle, you're gonna create some sparks. So I like to use the negative. I feel it's a little bit safer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my multimeter is set up in the right setting. It's gonna be set on the amp setting. The left side is for amps. I can run milliamps on this side, it shows, but we're gonna have a pretty large draw, over 10 amps. So, we're gonna do it that way. So the way you're gonna do it is just basically hook this up in series with the battery. So I'm gonna take the negative lead, I'm gonna hook it up to the negative terminal on the battery. I'm just gonna rest it here, basically. Here, I'm just gonna balance it on there. Then I'll take the positive, and I'm gonna hook it up to the wire that was connected to the battery just by hooking it up underneath this rubber boot here. And you could use a clamp or whatever you wanted but as long as you have uh, a reading you're basically going in series from the negative to the multimeter over to the wire that was hooked up to the negative and now you'll have a current draw and you'll see that it's a higher rating right now and then it'll eventually trickle down because basically what we did was we could reconnected the battery to the computer, to the vehicle, through the multimeter. So that's why we see a high current load in the beginning and then it starts to trickle down and it'll eventually shut everything off. Dome lights will shut off, PCM shuts off, BCM shuts off, everything is going to sleep. So now you can see we're reading 243 milliamps. So 242, 243 milliamps is a larger drain than normal. Uh, this would take, based on the reserve capacity of the battery, this would take uh, probably about two weeks to kill the battery if it was off. So this isn't a, a terrible drain, but it's larger than you want to see. You'd want to normally see 50 to 60 milliamps max. So the normal process of going through and checking for a drain, you want to make sure it's hooked up to the battery. You're measuring the load, and then when you see your current draw here, you'd start to go through each fuse on the fuse block and pull each fuse out until you saw a drop in current.
All right, so I pulled my fuse out. Now I see that it's back down to its normal, uh, normal current draw. And now I know that I found my circuit that has the load on it. So after that, you identify the circuit and start looking into that circuit and see what it could be. If it's a dome light, it could be power seats, it could be any type of a, a short or a relay. You'll have to start investigating that circuit a little bit deeper and figure out what the actual cause is. So I know that description was kind of vague. The intent is to just teach you how. So hook it up, you find your draw, and start unhooking circuits until you determine which circuit has the draw on it, then you can look into it. It's staying vague because it could be a number of different issues. It could be a stepper motor in your gauge cluster. It could be a light that's not turning off, a relay that's stuck. But just as a general overview of how to find the circuit, that's how you would do it. So now a lot of the instruction that you'll see and videos that you'll see out there will say, do not open the door, do not turn the key forward while you have your multimeter in line because you can damage the multimeter. So in my situation, I had to turn the key forward in order to find my issue. So when I plug this in, this will rest at 19 milliamps, which doesn't show me a problem until I turn my key forward. So now I'm gonna go to the truck, I'll turn the key forward and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I just went and turned the key forward, turned it back off, shut the door. You see a high draw of six amps. Now it'll slowly start to come back down. It'll eventually get to about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 amps, and then it'll come back up to 3.6. So there you drop down to 0.4 and now it comes back up to 3.6 amps. So this was my issue and this is only replicatable if you hook the battery up, turn the key forward and then turn it back off as if you were driving it and parking it. So that's why the normal testing method of just disconnecting the battery and then hooking up the, the multimeter looking for a draw it doesn't help in this situation because I never would have found it if I didn't turn the key forward. Now my issue starts and it'll do this over and over and over for hours and it, it'll kill the battery in about four hours. So 3.6 amps, comes down to 0.4, cycles back up to 3.6 and kills the battery. So now we gotta dig into why this is happening. As I was doing this, I was going through the normal testing method of pulling each fuse out and I wasn't seeing any difference in how this was reacting, but I was seeing a lot of false readings when I pulled different fuses out. Like if I pull this fuse, for example, we're at 3.4. Now if I pull that fuse out, that's the radio fuse. Now I see a significant drop in current draw. But in the end, it really didn't have anything. So now it came up to 2 instead of 1.6. So this is the radio fuse. I'll put the radio fuse back in. And then my draw comes back up to 3.6. But my issue wasn't actually anything to do with the radio. So that was actually a false reading. So what I had to do was find what I had to pull out of here to make this pattern stop happening, where it's going down and coming back up to 3.6. So that's what I had to do. So let's dig for the pattern. So this took quite a bit of time to do this, but the same thing, pulling all of the circuits and seeing what is gonna make that pattern stop happening. So I'm just gonna tell you guys, I went to LBEC2 here. This is the left bust electrical circuit or something like that. Basically it powers the fuse box inside on the driver's side under the dash. So when I pull that, you'll see this pattern change. So it'll come down to about 250 milliamps, but now it doesn't actually go back up to 3.6. So that tells me that that repetitive pattern in that circuit stops when I pull that one out. So now I can dig into that. Another thing that was kind of tricky and confusing me for a while, when I pulled this out, the pattern stopped, but when I put it back in, the pattern didn't start again. So the pattern is only gonna start again when I turn the key forward and turn it back off, then the pattern starts. So if I pull this, it stops, but if I put it back in, it doesn't do it again. 
but it still tells me there's an issue with this circuit, which is LBEC2. It says LBEC2 on the diagram, left bust electrical center, which basically goes to the fuse box inside underneath the dash. So you have LBEC1 and LBEC2. These both go to that same fuse block under the dash, but they power different circuits. So the LBEC1 circuit is okay, LBEC2 is not okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trace this to that fuse block and find out which circuits this is powering. So to do that, we're gonna remove this fuse and then we're gonna change our multimeter over to the continuity buzzer. So I'm gonna switch the lead back over and I'm gonna put it on the little buzzer. And what this is gonna do is tell me when the circuit is closed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one lead, put it on the positive on the battery, and then I'm gonna touch the terminals inside where that fuse was. Okay, so the one on the inside closest to me has continuity to the battery, and then goes through the fuse. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna use this other terminal, the one that doesn't have continuity to the battery, and I'm gonna trace that to the fuse box because this is the one that is sending power to the fuse box. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna use an alligator clip, clip it onto that terminal, clip one end onto the multimeter lead, I'll leave it on the buzzer, and then I'm gonna use this to start probing on the inside of the fuse box under the dash. All right, so here's the box underneath the dash, and I have the lead hooked up to the continuity buzzer from that fuse box. So if I start probing around in here, some of these fuses are going to ring like this when others aren't. So all the ones that ring, that buzz, I know are connected to that LBEC2 fuse. There's one up here. There's a couple down here. And there's one right here. So these are all powered by LBEC2. So now if we go look at what those fuses actually were. It was aux power 2, LOX, ECC, DDM, and PDM are all on that circuit for the LBEC2 circuit. Now that we have that identified, we can come back over and put the LBEC2 fuse back in there. And then we'll start to pull those individual fuses on the other panel and see which one is causing our issue. So now what we're gonna do is hook the multimeter back up on DC amps set it back up how we had it before and we'll go start pulling fuses and reset it and see which one is causing the issue. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna go right for the DDM fuse driver door module. I'm gonna pull that out and I try to do this in one clip. Forward and back. Then we'll come out, shut the door. We're basically gonna start this sequence all over again. So we're going to watch what it comes down to. It should come down to about uh, 300 milliamps, two 300 milliamps. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set a timer. So I want to show you guys the importance of waiting when you're doing this testing. Why you should wait. Be patient. So you can verify. All right, so now we see it dropping down into the 0.4 amp or 400 milliamp range. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set a timer. And I won't make you guys sit through this whole thing, but we're gonna set this thing and run it for about five minutes. We'll come back in five minutes and see where this thing rests. So basically at five minutes, that's when uh, most of the BCM should be shut off and we'll get a decent uh, a decent current because if you're looking at 400 and 400 milliamps that's still a pretty high draw so you may be chasing your tail looking at other stuff 
and all you should all you really have to do is wait at that point so instead of waiting the five minutes you could be chasing your tail for hours all right so there we see it come down to 60 milliamps now so you can see it was sitting there for a while it took a little longer than five minutes closer to 10 so we'll call it 10 wait 10 minutes and then you'll see it come down to a acceptable range that's within range and then if I let it sit for another hour or two it will actually drop down to 19 milliamps I did test it yesterday I left the house for a couple hours and came back and it was at 19 so there you go sure enough through the testing we tracked this thing down to the driver door module fuse in the fuse panel and if we go over to the driver door module and we watch see when I lock and unlock the door this thing doesn't move or normally that would move so there's definitely an issue here so now I can start to look into this because through the testing, through the testing, what we found, we tracked it to here. And strangely enough, as I was on my second day outside troubleshooting that and working on it, my wife just happened to mention that the door lock wasn't working. So I guess that goes to say, like, if there's anything odd in your vehicle that's happening and then the next day the battery's dead, that could be the cause. I don't drive that vehicle. I drive a different one, but my wife drives that. Uh, so it was nice of her to mention it uh, that on my second day of troubleshooting it that the door lock wasn't working. But anyways, without her mentioning that, I still would have been able to track it down using that method to find out exactly where the problem was and what I need to go after fixing. So it's going to take time. I guess that's if I had to say anything about doing this. It's going to take time. Be patient, especially with a newer vehicle. You have to wait five minutes at least for stuff inside to start shutting off. So it looked like I had a 240 milliamp draw there for a while for five minutes. I don't actually have that draw. It's just the body control module and stuff inside, computer, whatever, is still on inside the vehicle, hasn't gone to sleep yet. So you may be chasing your tail for a long time if you're not giving it enough time to actually sit and wait to shut off and go to sleep. So 240 milliamp draw, I would have been pulling fuses for hours and not seeing any result if I didn't know to wait. So what I did do was uh, I found the pattern after I cycled the key. So what's, what's different about this is I had to cycle the key in order to see my problem. So if I disconnected the battery and then hook up the multimeter to see the amp draw, I didn't see any amp draw. I saw 19 milliamps and I still chased it in the beginning, like pulling all the fuses to see what was going on, even though I knew 19 milliamps was more than acceptable. Um, but I had to cycle the key to create the problem, just like you were driving it and then shutting it off. So, so that's what I had to do. Hopefully this video helped you guys. Uh, you may not have the same problem, but you may be able to kind of drill down and find out where the problem is, ish. Let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, be sure to leave a comment. I don't typically do how-tos like this very much unless there's something else that come up. It's more like playing and modification type stuff. So if you like that, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a good one.